I now have the pleasure of introducing Ms Sonia Cooper, Acting Commission Chief Executive of the Queensland Public Service Commission, our partner in delivering today's event. During her 28-year career in seven organisations across the public and private sectors, Sonia has developed capabilities and experience in organisational leadership, strategy, performance and change management. In 2016, Sonia worked as the CEO of the State Library of Queensland, leading the organisation through a difficult period to ensure business continuity, improve reputation and better workplace culture. Sonia has provided leadership in establishing and mobilising new organisations, brokered partnerships with industry and the tertiary education sector to deliver more capable and future-ready workforces and provided change leadership through a merger and acquisition process. Under Sonia's leadership, the Public Service Commission has delivered on major workforce strategy, leadership development, workplace culture and organisational change initiatives in partnership with agencies across the public sector. Sonia holds a Bachelor of Arts from the University of Queensland and a Bachelor of Business from the Queensland University of Technology. Sonia is a graduate and member of the Australian Institute of Company Directors. Would you please join me in welcoming Ms Sonia Cooper. Thank you very much, Rachel, and good morning, all. May I, too, begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands on which we gather here today, the Turrbal and Yagara peoples, and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. May I, too, acknowledge the distinguished guests here in the room today, in particular Dr David Solomon and Professor Ken Smith, and the many others, and all of you, for coming here today to hear this very important lecture. And thank you, Rachel, for the opportunity to partner with the Office of the Information Commissioner and to open today's Right to Information Solomon Lecture and to share my thoughts about the importance of openness, transparency and accountability, in particular in the Queensland public sector. I'd like to, if I may, briefly highlight some of the work that the Queensland Public Sector Leadership Board is supporting to build greater trust in the services we provide to the people, communities, businesses and industries of Queensland. Today we gather faced with an increasingly complex and rapidly changing world. The Queensland Public Sector Leadership Board recently received a presentation by Dr Pradeep Phillip of Deloitte on their 2017 Confidently Queensland report. Deloitte highlighted what they saw in their research as five megatrends for Queensland. Our regional trading partners are developing rapidly, creating new and emerging markets. Rising incomes and investments from their governments and industries can generate positive opportunities for Queensland if we can mobilise to take them. Digital disruption, as we're already experiencing, is having unforeseen impacts on society, even as it creates massive opportunities to achieve sustainable, inclusive growth. The influx of AI, robotics and automation in the workplace has dramatically accelerated in the last year, transforming in-demand roles and skills. The greatest opportunity is perhaps not just to redesign jobs or automate routine work, but to fundamentally rethink work architecture to benefit organisations, teams and individuals. Turning to the mega trend of urbanisation, while the majority of Queenslanders still live outside the Greater Brisbane area, the population of the South East has grown more rapidly than elsewhere, bringing regional development agendas to the fore. Indeed, the environment and the effects of climate change, perhaps the most daunting and most uncertain, such as more frequent and severe damage from weather events and the impact of human activity on the natural environment, our waterways, forests, marine environments and air quality. We see fires raging at the end of winter, Irukandji jellyfish off Fraser Island, coral bleaching of the Great Barrier Reef, all signs of our evolving climate. As we experience demographic change with an ageing population, we will find that personal care, our health, aged care and family services sectors will continue to grow. 
For the first time in our mature markets, young people believe that their lives will be worse than their parents and are actively questioning the core premises of government and corporate behaviour and the economic and social principles that guide it. The shift in power to the individual is being propelled by today's hyper-connected world. As Rachel highlighted, trust in government is in decline. Political systems increasingly perceived as polarised and less effective at meeting our social challenges. This is creating immense pressure, but is also creating opportunities, particularly around trust and transparency. As our policy problems become more complex and our customers, we, as members of our society, demand a different experience, we know that we need to build greater trust in the services we provide to the community. The benefits of community trust and engagement are indisputable. Traditional, fixed, hierarchical arrangements for organising public policy and the delivery of public services are increasingly unsuitable. We know this. We need to change the way the public sector operates adopt new mindsets and new behaviours that better support government being a listener and an enabler. We need to further devolve decision making and performance measures that support shared leadership and accountability. Policy innovation in the Queensland public sector is evolving at a pace and in a way never before seen. The government's objectives for the community, our future state, advancing Queensland priorities, are a clear call to action. The priorities are give all our children a great start, keep Queenslanders healthy, keep communities safe, protect the Great Barrier Reef, be a responsive government, create jobs in a strong economy. The targets for those priorities are ambitious, clear and published. The priorities are not in addition to our job. They are our job, the government's objectives for the community. And our leadership is required to create space and opportunity for dedicated focus and collaboration. The collaborative governance approach that is being adopted for the Our Future State Advancing Queensland's Priorities is a new and innovative model. It will require discipline, capability and commitment to be properly and successfully applied. With the support of the Queensland Public Sector Leadership Board, there is a body of work we are leading to build greater trust in the services the public sector provides to the people, communities, business and industries of Queensland. Our vision is a high performing, future focused public sector. Our purpose includes a professional, high performing workforce capable, collaborative and inspiring leaders, continuously improving future-focused organisations. The PSC's strategic objectives include providing collaborative steward stewardship of the public sector, developing public sector capability and enabling an agile, future-focused public sector. We seek to achieve this through strong foundations by managing an employment framework that drives performance, accountability and trust. Creating inclusive, respectful workplace cultures and workforce wellbeing which embraces diversity. And understanding our future workforce. In 2017, we worked with leaders across agencies to prepare a 10-year human capital outlook and a three-year human capital strategic roadmap. We're now working with agencies across the sector to progress a range of initiatives to better position ourselves now and for the future. We're continuing to jointly invest in building Queensland's leaders for today and for tomorrow supporting agencies to develop a diverse pipeline of high potential, high performing leaders at all stages of their career. And again, to support the delivery of the government's objectives for the community, there are some specific initiatives we are progressing to build
better and new capabilities to provide responsive services to the people and communities of Queensland. We're building the capability of our Deputy Directors General in the collaborative governance and collective leadership to assist them in the critical roles they play in delivering the Advancing Queensland's priorities. To achieve this requires the deputies to mirror and advance the collaborative behaviour we expect from our leadership board, also based on a collaborative governance model. The deputy cluster groups are working together to deliver on the priorities and the challenge is to not work as traditional interdepartmental committees, but rather to work as new virtual cross-sector teams that will require the deputies to challenge each other and work in new ways to develop creative solutions to entrenched policy challenges. We're working to support the DDG cohort by building their abilities and capabilities to work together collaboratively. We're working with the support of the leadership board to support and enable these deputies to work in new and different ways. And we're also calling on them to cascade those new ways of working in their everyday work throughout their agencies and with their colleagues. At the same time, we're working with the Department of Communities, Disability Services and Seniors to empower regional leaders to act together to address local challenges in place. This is seeking to build new capabilities and new ways of working at all levels of policy and service delivery. And again, with the government priority of be a responsive government, we're working under the leadership and with the Department of Housing and Public Works to build new capacities and new capabilities in our service delivery and design and the way in which we work together with those that we serve. Our ambition is to transform the way we work together across the public sector to embed a deeper culture of openness, transparency and accountability and working together on these challenges that we face. You're here today because you want to make a positive difference and you care about developing a deeper culture of openness and transparency. So I invite you to listen carefully, reflect deeply, connect here today afterwards with your colleagues and beyond and steel yourself with wisdom and courage. If we act together with wisdom, courage and determination, we can together make a difference which leads to better outcomes for all Queenslanders.